Nigeria has 200 million people. It is not the population that is the problem. It is the population of the thieves that is Nigeria's problem. They are not many, but they are the ones who have access to resources that should belong to everybody. How did we get to this conversation that I'm breaking down to you? It's the question you asked me about leadership. And so a lot of people don't know that some of these policies are part of the reasons why they are killing us. And that is why the West don't like African leaders who are conscious, who are brilliant, who understand the mechanics of how they manipulate our economic policies to pauperize us. They like, you know, they like cooking up numbers. You mentioned earlier that Nigeria is the biggest economy on the continent of Africa. I don't know how you came about that. Mm -hmm. How are we big when the we don't have electricity? You the potentials. Well, maybe potential. potentials. The but how we big when you don't have electricity? Buoyant. You can't even electrify mm -hmm. like half of a city. Mm -hmm. How can you be big? Yeah. It's not a big economy. Well, Nigeria is assets. the big for nothing, you know, what fella used to call BBC, big blind country. Mm. on the continent of with, Africa. With huge potential. It has huge potential, but, but for you to, have, to get to that potential, you must remove leadership. the roadblocks. Mm. Leadership is a Absolutely. major, major factor in making and sure that's that why Nigeria is today. in charge of the, you know, the destiny of Africa. The fact that we need ECOWAS to speak to Boy Scouts in EJ and all that shows our weakness. Mm. If Nigeria were to be the right country, you know, in position that it ought to be on the continent of Africa. We don't need West Africa to tell our neighbors in the that they should sustain democracy. Absolutely. Let talked about uh, the fuel subsidy all over the world, in Britain, in the United States of America, in Germany, farmers and farming is subsidized. All over the world, largely energy is subsidized. Why is the IMF and the World Bank telling us that the way out of the morass is subsidy? I think that what leaders must do in Africa and indeed this country is to cop corruption. If I tell you what corruption goes on in the oil sector, you will know that the solution to our problem is not in the removal of subsidy, but in the cobbin of corruption. Trillions of dollars, trillions of naira are stolen by people who are protected by the state are stolen by people who are protected by the PDP, the APC, and those who politic with our collective destiny. The way out of the morass is to check corruption, not increasing poverty for the masses of our people and making lives better for the rich. Thank That's you. the way to go. We must be African-centric and pan-Nigerian in leadership. We must. So what makes you believe today that you're an ideal candidate for president of Nigeria? So you have to look at power from the point of view of uh, service. And I think Chris had mentioned that, that we have produced over the years very egocentric leaders in this country who care more about themselves, their friends and families, and not the Nigerian people. And you must also look at those of us, particularly those of us who want to claim to be young, where we stood when it mattered most in this country. And I can't say that enough. You see, it's not always true that somebody suddenly decides when they've turned 45 years old, 50 years old, or 60, that they want to change their country. When, as a matter of fact, when your services were needed for the country, when you're in your 20s, you just didn't partake. You didn't partake in fighting for the rights of your people. You didn't partake in fighting for the rights of your mates when you're in the university. And then when it's time for compensation or compensatory leadership, as I like to call it, you say, yes, we, we love this country. Uh, we want to work for the country. We want to make things work. I come from a long tradition of sacrifice. And when leaders... When people want to choose their leaders, we always say that they should look for leaders who have pedigree, who have integrity, who have history. And I think I fall into all these categories. And leaders who can make sacrifices, leaders who can deny themselves of comfort when it's needed uh, so that their own people can have comfort. Leaders who can uh, speak to issues affecting their people, leaders who can motivate. Because sometimes when people talk about leadership, they think the moment you are president, you should also be the accountant, you should be the doctor. No, leaders who also 
becomes a human resource center of the country. We can find the best hands to work with to make the country move forward at all times. That is where people like us come in. Leaders who have education, not literacy. So, so that you can have a good spectrum of understanding of the country that you are planning to lead. You see, I always say this, that Nigeria is not complicated as our leaders make it sound. But what is complicated is that the leaders themselves don't understand the nature of complexity. To the point that the only excuse they give you is that, oh, Nigeria is complicated. Oh, Nigeria is too difficult to handle. But you look at the size of Nigeria itself. I studied geography and planning at the University of Nigeria. That was my first degree. You should ask yourself, how long does it take to fly from one part of Nigeria to the other? Maybe an hour <laughs> to my degree from Lagos, if you have a good aircraft. It'll take you there in an hour. But as a president in the U.S., a country that has 50 states, of which one state, Alaska, is bigger than Nigeria. One state, Alaska, is bigger than Nigeria. And you can fly from the east coast of the U.S. to the west coast, that is New York to California, for six hours. We are still in the air. But in this country where you can travel from one place to the other in a few hours, it's considered or regarded as complex. And then you put in charge of that country, people have no understanding of how to run a country. You have a U.S. that has maybe only 20 ministers. We have 42 here in Nigeria. The U.S. is a country of 350 million people and a economy that is in, in trillions. They have maybe 100 and something senators. Here, with an economy of a state, equivalent of a state in the U.S., we have 109 senators and how many state of uh, House of Assembly, I mean, National Assembly members. All these guys are just wasting resources that should belong to the people. And then, we have population. Population has become a blessing to countries. China is blessed with population. They are using it positively. India is blessed with population. But Nigeria has 200 million people. It is not the population that is the problem. It is the population of the thieves that is Nigeria's problem. They are not many, but they are the ones who have access to resources that should belong to everybody. How did we get to this conversation that I'm breaking down to you? It's the question you asked me about leadership. Those who ran Nigeria in the 60s, after independence, they were in their 20s. But those who are running Nigeria now, you don't even know their age which is a problem. So you have a problem of integrity. You have a problem of people with no pedigree, people who are fraudulent in nature, running the country. You're expecting the country, as Chris said, to make progress. When the meaning of democracy has been turned upside down, the reason why the people of Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, are making fun of us is because they know that the democracy we claim we are practicing here is not democracy. So, what is the difference between a coup plotter in army uniform and a coup plotter in civilian garb? They are the same. The moment you cannot have an organized, free and fair election with integrity, you have no moral right to discuss democracy anywhere in the world. Even if it is in Palau, one of the smallest countries in the world. They will make mockery of That's why we're a joke on the continent, of, on, the, on the West African coast. You know, say Nigeria president said we should invade Niger. But had Nigeria had credibility in leadership and integrity, you don't need to go to, you'll be a moral voice. You say to them, look, we are neighbors. I'm sorry, you cannot overthrow your government. Go and wait for another election. Look at them. They are saying they want three years. You change either their uniform to Agbada. And what I find very sad about it is that in the midst of the conversation, we are still being controlled like marionettes by the West and the East Bloc. You know, people now prefer Russia to America. That is how we got into the situation we are in in the 60s. That whole East and West Bloc, uh, you know, uh, dichotomy and the use of the African continent mm -hmm. as experimental space for whatever their own ideological things are. I don't want to be controlled by the U.S., but I also don't want a Putin. <laughs>